Calculating Cal Toomey joins us. G'day, Calculator. Good, good morning, Gary. Good morning, Tim. Not sure Leon Baker would be much on the trade market this year, but Leon Baker... Don't there. underestimate He could Leon. still play. I saw him the other day, Cal. He's very, very fit still. Oh, well, he was nearly BOG in that grand final, wasn't he, Tim? Very, very close. Uh, he was a magnificent well, this, player. Probably You're probably too young to remember him. He was a magnificent player. There's only one player unlucky not to get the Norm Smith medal in that game, and I'm constantly reminded of it. Now, I know I've got to get my head around the fact that this salary cap is going up and up and up and up, so the figures that are bandied around for dirt, certain players sound excessive, but that's the world we live in. Is that going to be the case for Andy McGrath? Well, we've heard a lot about most of the leading free agents. There hasn't been heaps spoken about Andy McGrath's contract. It's been pretty quiet, but my understanding is there'll be, and there is a six-year offer put forward for him there at Essendon. Now, he's restricted free agent, so he's in their top 25% earners this year, which you'd expect as the vice captain. Longer deals do give clubs flexibility within their cap. Essendon re-signed Darcy Parrish last year for six years, Mason Redmond for five, Zach Merritt signed for six years in his free agency year. Jordan Ridley kind of just redid a deal that ended up being a six-year term. So that's in sync with their other players of a similar stage and, and level. McGrath, of course, the number one pick in 2016. But, uh, yeah, that one's a pretty fresh one with uh, the six-year offer there. Hey, Cal, just remind us again why the clubs love these long, long-term deals. Well, for one, it's free market rate at the moment, a free mm-hmm. agent rate at this point. So he's in that peak period of his career and, they like to have these guys on the longer term deals because it lets them move around their money. And it means that you can front end it, you can back end it, you can push it to later in the deals, you can add on an extra couple of years later on. I know there's all the talk about this, but Essendon have salary cap space. Uh, last year, they signed Ben McKay on six years with a trigger for a seventh, but front ended it heavily. So while they've got all this money, they're paying for it now and they can still attack the market in coming years. So it gives flex. And if something has to happen down the track, then you actually still own the player. And if they want to leave, you have some trade mm-hmm. control. Great explanation. Uh, tell us about the deal that Brisbane have tabled for uh, Goose. <laughs> uh, Chuck Berry. Jared Berry is another one who is a restricted free agent. Only nine of them in the game at the moment. It, it does mean that if he wants to leave the lines, they could match an offer. But Brisbane has made a contract off to keep him. Expect those talks to get moving a little more in coming weeks, maybe a bit closer to mid-year. But obviously pretty settled in Queensland, where his brother is at Gold Coast, as well as other family up there. Rivals are keeping an eye on it, wondering if the promise of more midfield and centre bounce time could sway him. But the Lions have an offer in front of him. So... He and, obviously, Hugh McCluggage are their big ones at the moment, weighing their free agency calls. Have you ever stood next to him? Goose. Yeah. Yeah. Jared Berry? Yeah. yeah. No, both of you. He's much, he's much, much bigger than you think he is. How big is he? He's big. What? He's about your size. He is not. He, he'd be a touch under you. Jared Berry, are you talking about? Yeah. From the Brisbane line. Yeah, he's, he's, he's much bigger than you think. What, what about Ollie Florent? Is he getting close to re-signing there at Sydney? Yeah, he's not quite as tall as Gary. No, he's, he's not. Uh, he's been... He's been one of their big priorities at the Swans as well. They've clearly tucked, kicked off Errol Goulden and James Robon before you deal. Ollie Florent could be the next one. He's in negotiations on a longer-term deal. Expecting that one to be around the four- to five-year mark. Unrestricted free agent and has that interest from Victorian clubs, but rivals are now expecting him to stay at Sydney. Logan McDonald and Will Hay were the other two in the Swans' big five. Uh, Logan also has signalled his intentions to stay. I apologise to you and stand corrected. 192 centimetres. And you are? 193. There you go. Wow. That's unbelievable. Um, Academy changes. We spoke uh, on Tuesday on this program about academies and talent coming through, not bemoaning the fact that they're getting access to them, but rather congratulating them on developing this particular part of it. What are the changes potentially that may happen? Yeah, I think there's about 10 players. You spoke to Taylor Adams before about in the Swans and Gold Coast game this week. About 10 players across that game come through their respective academies. Lots on the agenda of the AFL. Uh, we spoke to Andrew Dillon yesterday on afl.com.au. And interestingly, he didn't rule out bringing these bidding changes for father sons and academies for this year's draft. So usually the AFL likes to give clubs a lot of lead-in time given future picks can be swapped and all of that. The clubs had been expecting it more likely for 2025. So that's still a watch. He didn't rule it in, didn't rule it out. Um, and clearly there's going to be a higher rate paid for these academy and father-son players and a little bit closer to whether that means the discount is gone uh, or something around having a pick within the round that the bid comes. Something like that will be worked through. But he also spoke, uh, Andrew Dillon, about the concussion payout policy. Obviously very topical at the moment mm-hmm. given the retirement of Angus Brasher and Nathan Murphy. And I spoke to him last night, Tim. Uh, and how much of their contracts are paid within the salary cap or outside of it. 
So Andrew Dillon said that that news and policy will be delivered to clubs within the next few weeks at the very latest. So that's very, very close to coming and being formalised. And uh, a couple of standouts from the AFL Academy game last week that uh, have got an AFL connection already or a father-son type connection. Yeah, a couple actually. So you're, you guys are obviously all across Levi Ashcroft and Jagger Smith and Josh Smiley. A couple of others stood out last week. Luke Trainer, he's a mobile defender, had 20 disposals and four marks. He was the best on ground. Bit of a Jordan Ridley type. Very nice kick and shaping as a potential top 15 pick. He's actually the grandson, I believe, of, of Doug Wade. Uh, so the family connection there. And also Taj Hotton, who was a late call up to the academy. He's an exciting half forward midfield. He's the son of. Uh, former Magpie Trent and the Carlton player as well, Trent Hotton, and also the brother of current Saint Ollie. He's a, a half forward midfielder. He's been really, really good to the start of this season. He kicked two goals from eighteen touches. Yeah, wiry type, but really smart around goal. He, he's he's definitely pushing up the ranks. So a couple of names there to keep an eye out on. He's not father son eligible though, is he? Uh, my understanding. No. No, he's not. Trent didn't play a hundred games at either club, so it falls short. So he'll be in the open draft. Round six also is the time, once round six is completed, where clubs can start to negotiate with first-round draft picks to extending their contract. Am I right in saying that? You are. So as of Monday, they're, they're able to do that um, officially. I'm sure conversations have been going on uh, in the background before then. I don't expect too much movement, though, on the first-round picks to, to be re-signed or the top 20 picks to be re-signed. Why not? Um, well, they've got three years now, so it's kind of an unintended consequence a little bit in that um, if they were just up to their two years like standard in the past, I think a lot of them would have already done an extra two years to get them to their four. At the moment, though, they're waiting and, and just seeing what the value skyrockets do. We actually wrote about this on afl.com.au today. There's a, there's a funny little quirk that does apply to the top five picks. I won't go into it in detail, but it does allow them to be paid a lot more in their third year if they reach a couple of marks. and That can give the likes of West Coast with Harley Reid and Colby McKercher with North Melbourne a chance to really um, pay them what they are, are worth in their third year, like a day cost and Sheasel might be worth next year. But um, I don't expect too much movement on the, the, the third year deals just yet. All right, a little bit of rapid fire for you just to finish off. These have come off the old temper text machine. Josh Battle, got any information there? I think most likely to stay at the Saints, but there is interest in there. I think they're working through a contract at the moment. Filippo? Yeah, uh, I think that one will, will happen reasonably soon in talks on a two-year deal. Bailey Smith to Collingwood? Oh, well, uh, they, they've been interested all the way through, as has Geelong and Hawthorne, so uh, that one's not going to be happening anytime soon. Spite Everett's son, is he a possibility for father-son? Yeah, Boston Everett. Uh, he's a chance, yeah. He's spent some time with the uh, uh, Saints Academy, uh, also alongside uh, Justin Peckett's son as well, Elwood Peckett, so a couple of potential father-sons there. Mm. All right. Well, it's a very nice comprehensive wrap from you, Calculator. And congratulations on your one-on-one interview with uh, Andrew Dillon, too. How did you secure that? <laughs> hey, hard, hard fought one, that one. He scooped everyone. Hey, thanks for coming on and sharing those thoughts. You can read all about it on afl.com.au, where the calculator is the main man there. Who's, who is the main headline act between you and Riley? <laughs> Uh, no, even. It's always even. We're no, a team. So not what we don't lose as a team on AFL.com. Hey, what Riley said. Do you know there's three Rileys <laughs> playing tonight too and they're all spelt differently? Is is that right? I didn't know that. Hey, Tim, I thought you weren't going to tell Gaz about our texting yesterday. So we've yeah. that under wraps. No, it slipped, it slipped yeah. out. Sorry me, about that. Me and Calculator go way, way, way back. Not as far back as the wisp and the cow. No, you don't. How far back do you go? Way back. Right. Way I'll, back. I might have to talk to, to you later soon. today, Calculating Cal. Thanks for joining us. Big round of footy. <laughs> round six. Oh, it is a magnificent... Let me run through the games for you, Wiss, because this is what we like to do on a Thursday. St Kilda take on the Western Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. Then Adelaide take on Essendon. Collingwood take on Port. Carlton take on the Giants. The Lions take on the Cats. Eagles and the Dockers in the Derby. Swans and the Red Hot Suns. And then the un- or the winless, North and the Hawks. If you can only watch one game this weekend... This is a great question I came up with in the meeting. If you can only watch one game this weekend, you can only pick one. One. No others. Right. Which is it? You've got a blackout on every other game. Every other game is a blackout. 0 4 0 3 3 9 8 11 16 one 3 hundred seven three six seven three six. Join in this. One game only. Do you sit down tonight and watch the Saints and the Dogs? Do you wait for Saturday and see whether Port can mm. get the job done at MCG? 
do you wait until Saturday night to see the Lions host the Cats? Or you go, nah, I'm saving it all up for the curiosity of North and Hawthorne. Do you know what? I think for me, I, I've changed my mind since we spoke about this before we came on air this morning. I'm going to go for, I think the game that we learn the most from in terms of what might happen at the pointy end of the season. That's not the question. I th- yeah, but, You're thinking about it too much. Okay. Well, I've thought about it a lot. I think it's Collingwood and Port at the MC. Well, that, that, the Garrity, I'm, I'm actually calling it the Garrity game. <laughs> Twilight Gary's going there. It's not Twilight. That's a 145 Saturday. Yeah. Uh, it'd be a massive crowd there massive. because I think uh, fans love the 145 start at the MCG. Huge. I think it'll be about a. I reckon they could get nearly 70,000 there at the MCG, even though they're playing against Port Adelaide. There'll be a lot of Collingwood fans so, there. I think that is the game that we're going to learn. A, Collingwood was still thinking, okay, have, have they got it or they haven't got it? A great point. Can they turn it on? Can't they turn it it's on? A great question. It's a great How question. good are Port? Yeah. On the road, they need to be able to do that and replicate some of the form they've shown in Adelaide on the road. Can they do it? That's exactly the line we were taking when we talked about it with our guys who are doing the show. It's got righto. The shiny new toys poured. It's Butters and Rosie and Horn. They're coming to town. They're coming and you want to test yourself. So are they the best in the competition? Maybe not quite, but I'll tell you what, they go to the MCG. Mm. The reigning premiers, fresh off a of freshen up, who have had an ordinary start to the season. Now we'll find out about you boys. See, we, and then from the other side of it, you go, okay, the Magpies, you've had a weekend off. Maybe they caught you on the hop a bit. You know, short and pre-season, all that sort of stuff. You've had a long time to get ready. You know what's coming. Let's see whether you're going to be the real deal or not. Oh, it sounds like you've had a good think about this. That's our game, so I did a bit of <laughs> you've thinking about it. done some work already, have you? Hey, just on the premiership window, let's talk about tonight. I'm just interested in this matchup because I think they're, I think this is a tightly matched game Ooh, between yeah. the Bulldogs and the Saints tonight. On your little premiership That's window. too early for the window. I know it's a little bit early, but where have they been placed after the early round so well, far this season? Well, the Saints are where you need every premiership team in recent times in the last 18 years to be, and that's in the top six defensively. You have to be top six defensively. Yep. They're there, and yep. that's no great surprise because that's what Ross Lyon teams do. They don't get split open. No, no, they don't. no one splits up. Very rarely they rarely. get split open. But they've got to get more potent when they go forward. They've got to score more wisp. Yeah, I know, but offensively they, they're not. They're, they're just that's the area where they've got to get better at. And Max King's not playing tonight, so it's going to be a bigger challenge. But they know that. They everyone, don't have everyone a, knows that. They don't have a gun loaded elite mid uh, forward line, though, do they? No, they don't. And the other side does potentially, even though Jamari Eagle Hagen's not playing tonight. Mm. They've still got Norton down there. Darcy can go forward. They've brought Rory Lobb back into the side. Yeah. Uh, Waitman's a goal kicker. They look better. F- Suited in that part um, against the St Kilda defence, but their team defence is very good, as you say. Will they borrow anything from the way that Essendon went after the Bulldogs last Friday night? Well, you're talking about the fact that Durham went to Bonton Pally, not as a hard, hard lockdown, but as an accountable midfielder against the best player in the comp. And uh, Corwell went to Libertura. They haven't got Libertura to worry about. So, yeah, I guess they put work into the Bont, but that. Look, lots of clubs are trying to put work in the bond. Does, doesn't always work. It did last week, and I would, if I was a betting man, mm-hmm. I would suggest that the bond um, wouldn't have another game like he did last week. That's just what you'd think off the top. It was a rare, quiet game for him. Mm. Are you surprised that they bought or they brought uh, Rory Lobb into the team to replace Jamari Yuga Hagen? So they've got a Norton Darcy one-two punch from a height point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, English in the ruck. So you think they'd cover that with Darcy being able to pinch hit and give English a chop out. So a they little, could have, yeah, but little. they can, by playing lob, they'll stretch. If they get enough of the ball supply, they will stretch the St Kilda defence. Well, it's, the St Kilda defence doesn't get stretched that often. So Battle, Cordy and Wilkie would be enough to handle that combination, any combination of that. Well, when I say handle it, none of those they, guys they are big. match up with them okay. None of, they, none of those guys are big, big. Though. Cordy's tall. No, he's not that big. How yeah, tall is Cordy? We'll do some work on that. But they play tall. Yeah, well, they are their tall defenders, but yeah. they're not big, big blokes. Yeah. Oh, it's a good matchup. It's a really good matchup. 195, Cordy, and you're talking about 200s, the other guys, aren't you? With Darcy. Darcy's 210 or something, isn't he? Yeah. 
Gee, he, th- I know we talk about this kid a lot, but there is a lot to like about the way that he plays. Yeah. And there, I think there's so much more that he can give. I was talking to somebody about him during the week and he missed out on selection early in the season. And they told him, okay, these are the things you need to do. You need to go back to the VFL. You need to play there. And uh, the way that you're going to end up back in the team is by forcing your way back in by your know, numbers and performance. And that's yeah. exactly what he did. So he's got that desire and that competitive stamina about him as well. We don't tip often, but which way are you leaning at this particular stage of the day at uh, 10 past seven in the morning? Well, I'm just thinking about the five day break that the Saints have. And I'm thinking about the pressure that's been applied to the Bulldogs. They'll come out, they'll be a snarly team tonight. So I think just based on that, because there's not a lot between these two teams in terms of the talent they're going to put out there. So I'm going to go with them. You're blowtorching. Uh, you think the blowtorch has just singes them a bit. Well, it always does, doesn't it? Like yes. it gets a reaction. Now, it's not a lasting reaction, mm. but it's an attitude change potentially. And they were poor. They were really poor in the competitive nature about the way they went about the they game were. last week. They were. But, I mean, that's something that they don't normally, like a, a, a beverage coach team mm. doesn't normally display like they did last week. I'm expecting there going to be a reversal there. I don't know, I want to tell you who just gave me this information, but the Saints belted the dogs by 51 points early last year. That's last year though, Gary. Who, who gave me that? Uh, Brooke. <laughs> did he? <laughs> he did. Of course he did. I'm leaning a bit towards your line of thinking. Only, I don't, there's hardly anything between them. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be uh, investing that's for sure. No, and Jack Steele was back to his All-Australian best last week too. He was the number one player on the ground. So will he go to Bond or will Windhager go to Bond? No, I think we, I think Rossi likes to – he likes his midfield to play a cannibal type of football anyway. Mm. Um, so I think it might be Windhager. Oh, oh, Seb Ross has done those jobs as well um, where he – Nepotism. Has a, well, <laughs> Nepotism. He's played <laughs> as the cooler – and done a good job doing that as well. Marshall in English is going to be pivotal. Pivotal. Raul Marshall's a very, very fine player. Yeah, hey, he was. I tell you what, he English English got away with uh, a poor game last week, and we I don't think all. I don't think he got the blowtorch applied to him nearly enough. You'd expect that he would have been a lot stronger and a lot more aggressive around the ball last week. No, than I don't he think was. he was missed. I think uh, who got him? I think Lethal got him. Lethal did. I think Lethal got him. I didn't know that. He might have. He might have used the S word. Not the not the four the four letter one. The four letter S word. That's the most dangerous word that you can have applied to you, that if, one. If I was going to watch a game this, if I had to apply my own very good question to myself, mm. um, I think, and you'll laugh at this, I think I'd wait until Sunday four o five for the game of the round. North and Hawks. Okay. What, because of? Well, because they both haven't won. The coaches don't like each other. Mm. Uh, the Hawks have had that week. You reckon the blowtorch is on the Western Bulldogs. The Hawks have been absolutely woeful. North Melbourne got smashed by Geelong. You'd think that'd be a pretty desperate sort of encounter. I'm not sure. It's yeah, that's a the, strong case. The most beautiful game you'll ever see. But in terms of how badly teams want to win. Whew. No, there'll be some desperation uh, around that. 